Hey, good morning. Welcome to morning prayer. I'm just going to shift you and hope that you don't fall down when I move you. There you go. That's a little bit better. There we are. Candle in the foreground. There we are. Welcome to morning prayer. I'll wait for a few of you to come on. Hi, Pat and Mary. Lovely. Lovely to see people coming on. That's um, Just wait for those numbers to creep up. It's just before nine, so I'm back on form. Welcome to morning prayer this morning. We'll uh, commit the day to you. Morning, Stuart and Chris and Anne. Hi, welcome to morning prayer. I'm going to let a few of you come on before we get going. Morning, Christine. Uh, oh, Mary says good morning. Morning, Pat. Let's just get a few more. Watch those numbers creep up as everyone joins us. Sometimes there's a delay in Facebook that can even be up to about five minutes before you can find a live that's going on, even if you um, tick to say you want notifications, even if you um, you know like the page, you still sometimes are a delay in finding us. Morning Roz and Janet and Bill and Sheila and Kate. How's your back this morning, Kate? Hi, Marlene and Caroline, and Pat and Ray, and Alison, working and listening, multitasking, fabulous, morning Christine, and uh, morning all says, uh, Roz, and Pat and Ray say morning all, morning Liz, the beauty of joining me for morning prayer, like I do when I join Mark, it, um, and you all at Morning Pearl, is that you can do a little bit of other stuff and listen along at the same time. You don't have to sit there rooted looking at me all the time. Um, I'm sure there's better things for you to look at than myself. Morning June. Uh, morning Caroline. So of course, there we go, the little tag has come up to say that I'm now live. So those that want to catch up and press on that button, um, or press on that part of the screen allows you to be taken into the live if you're not already there. So yes, Facebook does take a while, which is why I waffle along a lot at the um, in the beginning. Kate says, laid in bed as that's the most comfortable. It is slightly better than yesterday. Thank you. Oh, good, Kate. We will keep praying for you. Eating a bowl of fruit, Mary. That's very healthy, Mary. I'm impressed. And, Ma and another Mary's joined us. This is why I do say whenever I we start to pray for those who are unwell, I always say, please don't assume that we have lots of Kates. We have lots of Marys. We have lots of Pats. You know, there are lots of names that we will see repeated. And, you know, they're common names. Unless it's Nelving. You know, then you can be pretty sure that it could be somebody else. Morning, Lisa. Let's hope it does stay dry. We're hoping to go for a lunchtime walk between stuff that's going on for both of us. So we'll be walking around Stratton. So if you want to say hi at a distance, yeah, away from your garden, then please do. Right, it's Candlemas. I know, it's confusing. We celebrated Candlemas on Sunday. That's what we tend to do with some feasts, is we move them to a convenient Sunday so that um, because they're a little bit special um, or an important part that marks Jesus's life. After today, we go back into ordinary time for a very short bit of um, week or a week and a half or something before we hit Lent. So we're back at, we, we will hit ordinary time and I'll um, I mention a little bit about ordinary time later or tomorrow. Morning, Mary. So um, what I'm going to do, rather than perhaps do a reflection, because you can watch Sundays, um, quite frankly, if you wanted to know a little bit more about Candlemas, I'm going to read the Old Testament because that's why um, Jesus was presented at the, at the temple. So that will just fill in some of the blanks maybe from the Old Testament for us. So let's begin. I'm going to light our candle. And it's only the second day of the month of February. So if your intentions went awry before God yesterday, praise the Lord. His mercies are renewed every morning and we can start again. 
What went well? What didn't go well? What would you like God's help with? We don't do these things in our own strength. We ask for God's strength. We say sorry and we reset and we stop looking backwards and we look forward. We acknowledge, yep, didn't work last week, yesterday, but today it's going to be different. Today I am going to set an alarm on my phone to pray. I am going to set a, um, some time aside to go for a walk. I am going to set it. So set your intentions. Be with God as we can begin our morning prayer together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all your peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. There's two psalms this morning, but we're going to just stick with Psalm 48, which is the appointed psalm. If you have a little guide, then often the psalm in bold is the one that you can concentrate on. Um, again, as I've explained many a time, if you use the actual uh, red book, which you will see me use tonight at Complim, there are little red lines down the side. And those are the things that show you that those are the important things that you should be praying every prayer session. And everything else is a may. So, and some, some prayers are said and some are, yes, some, because it's all prayer, is said, and some can be left out. But you can say the whole lot. But we're going to go with Psalm 48. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised, in the city of our God. His holy mountain is fair and lifted high, the joy of all the earth. On Mount Zion, the divine dwelling place, stands the city of the great king. In her places, God has shown himself to be a sure refuge. For behold, the kings of the earth assembled and swept forward together. They saw and were dumbfounded. Dismayed, they fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in labour. As when the east wind shatters the ship of Tarshish. As we had heard, so we have seen. In the city of the Lord of hosts, the city of our God, God has established her forever. We have, hate, we have waited on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. As with your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion rejoice and the daughters of Judah be glad because of your judgments, O God. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Count all her towers. Consider well her bulwarks. Pass through her citadels. That you may tell those who come after that such is our God for ever and ever. It is he that shall be our guide for evermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So, a depart from tradition, we are going to read Exodus chapter 13, beginning at verse 1.
The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever is the first to open the womb among the Israelites of human beings and animals is mine. Moses said to the people, Remember this day on which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, because the Lord brought you out from there by the strength of hand. No leavened bread shall be eaten. Today, in the month of Abib, you are going out. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, which he swore to your ancestors to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, you shall keep this observance in this month. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there shall be a festival unto the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. No leavened bread shall be seen in your possession, and no leaven shall be seen among you in all your territory. You shall tell your child on that day, it is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. It shall serve for you as a sign of your hand and as a reminder on your forehead so that the teaching of the Lord may be upon your lips. For with a strong hand the Lord brought you out of Egypt. You shall keep this ordinance at its proper time from year to year. When the Lord brought you out into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you and your ancestors, and has given it to you, you shall set apart to the Lord all the first opens of the womb. All the firstborn of your livestock that are male shall be the Lord's. But every firstborn donkey you shall redeem with a sheep. If you do not redeem it, you must break its neck. Every firstborn male among you shall you shall redeem. When the future of your when your future child asks you, what does this mean? You shall answer by strength of the hand of the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. When Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, from human firstborn to firstborn of animals. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord every male that first opens the womb, but every firstborn of my sons I redeem. It shall serve as a sign on your hand and as an emblem on your forehead, that by the strength of the hand of the Lord brought us out of Egypt. So it's the traditions that serve as reminders for the people of whom the firstborn is to, to give thanks to your, your firstborn. And that's what Mary and Joseph did. Sacrifices changed over time and what could be afforded by um, a rich people with lots of gifts from Egypt in order to get out and to take away all this punishment from God is now more recognised um, in uh, Mary and Joseph's time that you know there are various levels of um, wealth and therefore doves or pigeons can be sacrificed in place of more expensive livestock. Sacrifices and breaking of necks and all of that kind of thing to, of course, our sensitive enlightened ears where we go and we buy most produce dressed and put in plastic packaging for us um, can sound quite um, extreme and all of that feeds into our thoughts around the Old Testament God. Um, in, and separating him from the lovely, soft, cuddly New Testament God. Um, because it sounds like tough times, and it was back then. You know, there was there were the luxuries that we can look at today that allows you to understand some of the things that needed and was necessary back then. Um, so there's a lot in the context and how we view when we read the old testament that makes us separate the new and the old we must remember that 
many years pass as we be, as we read through the Old Testament before we come to the New Testament. And indeed, many years then pass before we come to our own um, time of life. So God's action is with humanity right the way through. But of course, it looks very different as we move through um, generations as to what God's interaction with us must need to be looked must necessarily necessary for God to intervene and to be part of our lives. So there are changes. I'm going to go on now to our New Testament reading, which just follows on from um, yesterday. Romans 12, chapter 12, verse 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern the will of God, what is good, acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. But to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ. And individually, we are members of one another. So uh, a follow on from yesterday where I, I said, you know, it's our human nature to compare ourselves and to put ourselves up above or below others, to treat people differently because of how we view them. And... You know, some of the uh, readings that we have read up until recently, some of them have been quite weird or um, quite patriarchal or, or sexist even. And you know, that is not because that's what Paul was like or that's it was because people just can't behave themselves. And, you know, if we were to read further on through Exodus, we would see the people out of Israel as they travel to the promised land that could have been a straightforward, quick journey, how they had to meander and move around in order to learn the lessons necessary for them to be the people God wanted them to be. Not by God's design was that, but it was by their behaviours that made it necessary. And with us, we know. People just aren't very good to each other. There are some wonderful examples of heroes, of everyday people sacrificing themselves. You hear of the Grenfell Towers, we hear of the explosion at the Arianda Grande concert, where people sat and held the hands of the very ill, um, not very ill, the very injured and the dying. Um, and you will always find the light in the darkness where people are little lights for God shining out and amongst all that is dark our doctors and nurses those that have kept this country going are the little lights in the darkness of this pandemic and we can be little lights to each other I've completely diverted myself away from the readings and the fact that it's Candlemas that's okay because God does lead and I quite like my off the cuff sense because I, I join you in seeking God's understanding for readings and for prayer in the mornings. It's fresh and part of the discipline I'm enjoying by leading in a slightly off the cuff manner is that I can be then more open to the Holy Spirit and what he might have to say to us as his people. I'm going to move on to the responses now. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. 
let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. We're going to go to the Benedictus now and there is a special refrain. The parents of dress of... I'll start that again. The parents of Jesus marvelled at what was said about him. And Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He is raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our lives. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The parents of Jesus marvelled at what was said about him, and Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. So we move now to... Uh, in our prayers to our prayers for the world and things that are going on this is the time if you would like prayer for someone in particular that uh, you know who is in need of God's healing at this time now is the time to give me those names we also pray for our teachers and for our children and young people that are part of our church community our church family or known to us or part of our own family if they're a teacher, put a little T by them. If they're a child, put a little S by them, or a teenager or a young person. Ah, Eileen uh, has a minor operation today, so we will pray for Christine's cousin. We need to pray that these things go without a hitch, without being cancelled and all of that. Also, you may know of places in the world because you have family members out there or you have connections out there. Um, if, please do let me know of those. Quite often now, our, frustratingly, our, um, our news can be quite insular and um, focused on what's going on. And obviously, quite rightly at times, um, Yes, I, I prayed for them yesterday, Liz, and we'll pray for them again today. Homeschooling is not easy. I'm just going to make a note of, of Eileen's operation is today. Just so that some people can come on and off the list quite smoothly as long as things go well. And sometimes they don't. Yes, I think the homeschooling needs to almost be on our as a permanent thing. Because actually it's really tough for parents to be both teacher and parent and um, loving towards their children all the time when it's um, quite stressful to get them to do stuff. Children always do better for um, others, even grandparents, um, than they do perhaps for their parents. Uh, so yes, 
Um, yes, if there is anybody else that you would like a prayer for, please do put their names um, up. Uh, if it's a teacher or a, a, a child, so not actually ill. Oh, it was yesterday. Ah, right. Good. So the op went well yesterday. Sorry. Um, but we want full recovery, don't we? Oh, yes. And my mouth. Um, I don't know what's happening with Aung San Suu Kyi. But yes, Myanmar is particular. We are praying for Hong Kong because of the human rights issues going on there with China. And I also have Russia because there's riots going on there. If there's anything else, please, please do let me know. Sometimes I miss bits on the news or we don't hear about it. <coughs> uh, um, and so let's pray hi leslie welcome to morning prayer loving god as we turn in our prayers this morning to the needs of our world we lift to you the developing world those countries where there is great poverty where there is a lack of access to sanitation medicine and social distancing is hard to do with all those existing issues comes this pandemic. So Lord, we lift to you those countries that need help and support at this time. We give thanks for the agencies and charities that go in and pray that they would be able to sustain their fundings through um, fundraising, but also through support from governments. We pray for just leadership in all, those, in all countries, where there is fairness and justice for all, just not, not just the wealthy who can afford ventilators. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for countries that are torn apart by war, and we pray for those innocent lives, that they would be protected in all of this. We pray for negotiation and peacekeepers, so that wars and greed would cease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In seemingly wealthy countries, Lord, there is much going wrong. We think of the larger countries that have had the highest death rate, not because of populace, but because of lack, perhaps, of leadership or structured ways of dealing with this virus. We live to you, India, Brazil, Mexico, America and the United Kingdom. Lord, we pray that this pandemic and the virus in these countries would be halted by the actions of all people and by clear leadership. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the riots in Russia, where people are protesting against human rights, abuse and for lack of food. We pray that unjust regimes would be closed down in countries where there is unfairness, injustice. We pray too for what's going on in Myanmar at this time. We have so little information coming out. We pray for the safety of all. We pray for innocent lives caught up in the struggles for power. We pray for Aung San Suu Kyi and all people who are in leadership, that wisdom, justice and fairness would prevail. We pray for the people of Hong Kong who too protest for human rights and against the violations to their freedoms. 
we pray that they would be protected and that protesters would not be disappeared or persecuted. We pray that our government and others would intervene in China's heavy handedness of Hong Kong. And we pray for the safety of that island. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our hospitals and our NHS at this time knowing that there are many that are overwhelmed, that just wards are full of patients, both COVID and those that are just ill as a result of life. Lord, we pray for them. We pray for our doctors and nurses, all that work there, long shifts, suffering, stress, strain and mental anguish. Lord, we pray that you would protect them, both in mind, body and spirit. With the great work and the difficult things that they have to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift to you our children and young people, our teachers and our parents who are homeschooling. We pray that those you fill those parents with patience, with love, with sensitivity, that you help them to let go of the stresses and struggles of teaching so that both child and parent and grandparent may enjoy the time together learning and sharing. We pray for those children and people who live in homes that are not safe. We pray that they would find a way out and a way to escape. We give thanks for social workers, for Claire and her colleagues, who seek to help those in greatest need. We pray for those whose four walls are a lot smaller, whose access to gardens and outdoor spaces and room with which to stretch and to run and to play are curtailed because they live in flats or very small homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our children and young people, that their childhoods, their education and their mental health would not be harmed as a result of this pandemic and the fallout as a result. That they would enjoy their homeschooling, that they would learn and they would be willing to listen and to learn, as well as to sit back and play on computers and screens. We pray for mental health, for physical health, for well-being. We pray for all those that have gone back to university, that they would be in safe accommodation, that they would enjoy their time at university regardless of this pandemic, that their mental health would be protected. And we pray for all those that are still at school, that are able to go because their parents are key workers or they are in a vulnerable category. We give thanks for those teachers, all teachers, and particularly lift to you those that have continued to offer education right through this pandemic. We pray for all who work in education, lecturers, as well as teachers and head teachers, those who decide how best to implement all the distancing and the rules and regulations that the government employ, apply. So we lift to you teachers known to us, Noelle, Lisa, Nick, Gareth, Susan, 
Sue, Joshua, Chris, Rebecca, Asher, Matthew, Sarah, Heather and Marie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our children and young people known to us and all those across the UK. We lift to you Joel, Talitha, Grace, Emily, Lily, Jacob, Hannah, Jake, Oscar, Kerry, Anton, Callum, Phoebe, Ellie, Travis, Nathan, Ruby, Noah, Evie, Charlie, Jack and Mia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I mean, God, we pray for Leslie, knowing that pain that continues throughout the days and hours can be so wearing, both mentally as well as physically. We pray that this painful tooth will subside and that the pain would slowly disappear and that her tooth will be fine. We pray for Kate's bad back. We pray that as it, we give thanks that it is better a bit today and pray that it will continue to recover, that she will be back to physical well-being. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for others known to us who are unwell at this time. Give thanks for Dorinda's recovery and pray that as doctors continue to explore what's wrong, that she will, um, she will be safe and that they will find the problem. We pray for Judy, for Jackie, for Peg, for Judith, for Julie, for Lizzie, for Mark, for Dennis, for Christine, for little Addie and her family, for little William and his family, for Pauline, for Linda, for Roy, for Stuart, for Beryl, for Eunice, for George, for Maria, for Bob, for Mary, for Bex, for John, for Mary, for Mary, for Jordan, for Astrid, for Kath, for Joe, for Eileen, and for Wendy. Lord, minister to each one according to your Holy Spirit's knowledge of their need. May they be brought to wholeness and fullness of life. May whatever ails them in mind, body or spirit be healed. Give guidance and wisdom to doctors, nurses and care workers who may be tending to them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I'm just going to end with the set intercessions. Lord, we do pray for all who are affected across our world by coronavirus, through either illness, isolation or anxiety. We pray that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping our national policies, that they would make wise decisions. We pray for their, the scientists that may guide them, for the economists that may bring wisdom. We pray the decisions would be there for the good and the health of our nation, both people and businesses and economy. We pray for Brexit negotiations, for new trade deals and talks. We pray for businesses of directly affected by all that is going on at this time. 
We pray for those who are losing their jobs in retail as we hear of new buyouts and shops closing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our doctors, nurses and medical researchers. We pray that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. We give thanks that the vaccine is rolling out across this country. We pray for its continued strategic deployment and give thanks for all those volunteers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are vulnerable, for the fearful, for those gravely ill and the dying. We pray for their families, that they all might know your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Turn now back to our collect for today. Almighty and ever-living God, clothed in majesty, whose beloved Son was this day presented in the temple, in substance of our flesh, grant that we may be presented to you with a pure and clean hearts. By your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity, oh, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Believing in the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining with me for morning prayer. We will be back, I will be back tonight offering you Compline at 9pm. If you would like to join me for that, it's a little lullaby for our souls before bed. You can always watch me just a little bit later um, if that's not um, your time for sleep. Or you can watch and then begin that settling process with God as you um, commit the night and yourselves to him. So I will be uh, back tonight at 9pm on here. And if um, you are not able to join me, then I perhaps will see some of you tomorrow. And until then, the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love today and always. Amen. Thank you for the hearts and thumbs up. Stay safe and stay healthy. Compline is a much more peaceful, less lively um, event and is only 10 to 15 minutes long. So if you've got a bit of time to carve out that you can um, join me for or to watch later, then please, please do join. So uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Oh, Gina, we're just leaving. Um, catch, Get me on catch up and I will see you all tonight or tomorrow. Stay safe, stay healthy.